In this video, I'm going to explain how the electric starter system works on KTM and Husqvarna late model two strokes and how to debug issues that you might experience. Since year model 2017, all KTM and Husqvarna off-road models have come fitted standard with lithium batteries. These are much lighter than lead acid batteries, but you should note that in cold weather you can have electric start issues. Uh, this is a uh, copy from the KTM operator's manual and it states that uh, when trying to start in cold temperatures, so it says below uh, 15 degrees C, uh, you can have issues. And uh, to get around that, uh, the method they recommend is using the e-start for five seconds. So press the e-start button for five seconds, then wait 30 seconds and repeat that until uh, the engine starts. Uh, by doing this, you're warming up the battery and uh, lithium ion batteries have a characteristic whereby the, the voltage increases with uh, temperature. So lo low temperature, the voltage goes down and uh, the power to the starter motor will decrease. So if you heat it up by doing multiple uh, start tries, uh, the temperature increases, the voltage increases, and uh, the power to the starter motor increases. So uh, typically, um, if the battery is in good shape, you'll be able to start your uh, bike using this method. Uh, if your bike has a Kickstarter, you can use a Kickstarter. I know uh, late model um, KTM TPIs, Husqvarna TPIs, do not come fitted with a Kickstarter, but if your model does have one or if you fitted one, um, the, at the beginning of the day when the bike is cold, you can use the Kickstarter to start it. And uh, once the bike has started and uh, the battery has started charging, it should warm up on its own. Uh, so you should be able to use the e-start after that um, with no problems. In order to easily debug electric starter issues, it's important to understand the electric circuit used in the starter system. This is the circuit used for 2017 through 2019 Carb Model 250 and 300 bikes. And I've color coded the uh, connections uh, the red connections are permanently 12 volts, black is ground, and orange is switch 12 volts. And here you can see the starter switch, which is on the handlebar, so you press this to start, and it has a four-way connection shown here. And here's the battery uh, with screw-on terminals. Here's the starter relay, which has a four-way connector, and also screw-on terminals for the battery connection and the switch connection to the starter motor. And here's the starter motor, which has a screw on connection and the ground connection is through the body of the starter motor to the frame. So the way this operates is when you press the uh, starter switch, uh, it switches 12 volts to the starter relay, uh, which closes this switch and that switch is 12 volts to the starter motor. The starter motor turns, and I'll show you later, uh, that engages the Bendix onto the flywheel and the engine will turn over and then start. And here you can see the circuit diagram for TPI bikes. It's very similar to carb models, but the starter switch shown here switches ground instead of 12 volts. Um, so you can see this side of the switch is a ground connection and when you press the starter switch, it switches this side uh, to ground, uh, which powers on uh, the relay and closes the switch. 12 volts is switched to the starter motor. The starter motor will then turn. Okay, so now I'll explain the hardware on the bike relating to the electric start system. Uh, the e-start button, uh, everyone should know, you press it and the starter motor should turn over if everything is working okay. And on my KTM 2021 300 TPI, you can see the starter switch four-way connector is just underneath the top triple clamp. And underneath the seat, you can see the lithium battery. Uh, so the ground connection uh, goes via the subframe uh, to the starter motor. And the positive connection uh, goes to the starter relay underneath it. There's a screw terminal and another screw terminal that goes to the starter motor. 
and there's also a four-way connector um, underneath the starter relay. I'll show that in more detail later. And now I'm showing the bottom right hand side of the engine and uh, you can just see the starter motor um, at the bottom of the engine and I've removed the uh, rubber cap, there's a rubber cap here uh, which protects the 12 volt connection uh, which is secured using a nut. Okay so here you can see the starter motor uh, shaft down here which drives the Bendix and when it's spinning uh, this part flies out and engages with the flywheel. Um, the Bendix bushings, so there's one in the cover here and from 2019 including 2020 it uses a uh, longer bushing uh, than previous models and there's another bushing uh, behind the Bendix which you'll be able to see when I remove the Bendix. So to remove the Bendix you just uh, pull it out and then you have to wriggle it around a little bit uh, to get it out. Okay, so there you can see it came out. Okay, so now you can see the two Bendix bushings. There's one here in the cover and one here in the case. And on the bench you can more clearly see the starter motor and uh, Bendix. And from 2017 through 21, uh, the same parts are used. Before 2017 the design was different, uh, slightly more complicated. Uh, this design is very simple. Uh, the Bendix is held in place between the crankcase and uh, the ignition cover um, uh, using these bushings. And uh, when the starter motor spins, uh, the Bendix spins as well and uh, this portion of the Bendix is flung out and engages into the flywheel and uh, turns the flywheel and the engine starts. Uh, one issue can be that the stock bushings, which you can see here, um, 2017 models use the uh, shorter bushing and from 2019 they started using longer bushings. They can wear out relatively quickly. Um, also the split design of the bushing uh, means that they are prone to uh, spin in the case bores. And if they spin in the bores, uh, the ball wears and you can develop play. And if play develops, uh, it means the Bendix can become canted and uh, either result in the, uh, a high load and the Bendix spinning slowly and you'll start getting poor engagement. And ultimately, uh, if the play becomes really bad, uh, the Bendix can get uh, jammed and uh, burn out the starter motor. So it's really a good idea to check the uh, bushings regularly, make sure they're still in good shape and uh, replace them if they're worn. Um, I do sell uh, higher quality uh, bushings made by XRC, which are bronze. And uh, if you install these, they should last the lifetime of the bike. Um, I'll put a link to them in case you want to purchase those in the description of the video. Okay, now I'm gonna go through some electric starter system issues that you can experience and checks to make. So I've already described an issue with cold weather. Um, if that's not the problem and uh, you've warmed up the battery uh, as much as you can and it still doesn't work, then uh, the next thing to check is the battery voltage. So with lithium batteries, uh, it should be measure above 13 volts. And if the battery voltage isn't the problem, uh, you should ne next check that the uh, battery and ground connections are secure, not corroded. And then you can check the starter switch connector. Uh, this is a four-way connector um, located at the front of the bike uh, behind, behind the headlight. And then you can check the starter switch is working correctly. Um, and you can back probe this by disconnecting the connector and using your multimeter um, on a continuity setting or resistance setting and measure uh, the resistance or measure that it's uh, closing when you press the switch. And then you can check the starter relay and connections are all good. To measure the battery voltage, I'm using a digital multimeter set to voltage range and I'm reading 13.26 volts, which is fine for this lithium battery. Um, if you're reading below 13 volts and it's a lithium battery, um, you'd want to charge it up. Uh, if it doesn't recover, then uh, it probably needs replacing. Uh, lithium batteries typically last uh, probably about three years of uh, regular use, so uh, they do need replacing. 
Um, if the battery discharges um, over a relatively short period of time, uh, for example a couple of weeks, you'd want to look at what's draining the battery. And uh, you can use the multimeter set to current modes, disconnect one of the battery terminals and measure the uh, leak. If your battery voltage is okay, the next check you want to make is that uh, your battery connections are okay and also the connection to the uh, bike frame or the subframe is okay. So you can use the digital multimeter set to resistance range and uh, measure the resistance from the battery terminal uh, across to the subframe. So uh, the first check you want to make is the uh, resistance of the probes. So I'm seeing 0.14 ohms. And then I'm going to go across to the subframe and measure the resistance. And I'm seeing the same. So it's pretty much zero ohm connection. So very low uh, resistance. And I know it's not corroded and it's connected well. Um, if you're not sure or if you don't have a multimeter, uh, you can disconnect the terminals and uh, clean them off with a wire brush um, and the subframe connection do the same. Also for the uh, positive terminal do the same. And then you can use some uh, dielectric grease or silicone grease to help prevent uh, corrosion and ensure it and maintain a good connection. And make sure you do up the terminals nice and tight. Don't over talk them, they're only small fasteners but they do need to be tight. The next thing to check is the starter switch four-way connector and on my 2021 model uh, you can see here that it's located under the top triple clamp. Uh, so this plug comes from the switch itself. Make sure it's uh, plugged into the connector firmly. Um, if it is plugged in and uh, the switch still doesn't work uh, then it's a good idea to unplug it. So you can just pull it out, uh, just wriggle it a little bit and it comes out. And then check the terminals um, that they're not corroded. Um, if there is corrosion, you'll need to clean it off. And then uh, to prevent corrosion in the future, it's a good idea to use some dielectric grease or silicone grease and then uh, plug it back in and uh, test it. And with the connector unplugged, you can see the uh, other side of the connector and inspect those as well. And uh, if they're corroded, you'll need to clean them out. Once you've confirmed that the starter switch connector terminals are not corroded and in good shape, uh, the next step is to confirm that the uh, starter switch itself is switching. Um, so you can use your digital multimeter set to resistance mode and probe across the switch terminals. And when you press the uh, starter switch, it should go to a low resistance. So you can see there I'm reading uh, 0.16 ohms and when I release it, it goes to um, out of range. So that's working as expected. If the starter switch had failed, uh, you'd expect to see a, a high resistance all the time, even when you press it. Um, that might be due to getting uh, water inside it, corroding it, or some dirt inside. And the last check to make is the starter relay. And uh, if nothing happens when you press the starter switch, it means either th there's no power or the uh, control circuit in some ways uh, faulty. So I've pulled off the four-way connector from the bottom of the starter relay. And uh, it's a good idea to inspect inside the terminals uh, for corrosion and also on the pins of the starter relay itself. If there is corrosion, clean it off and then you can use some dielectric grease and reconnect it and that should protect it from future corrosion. Uh, you can also, uh, using your multimeter, check that the uh, terminals are connected to the uh, starter switch terminals correctly. And uh, depending on your bike, you can use your circuit diagram and check that all the terminals have the correct connections and are operating correctly and then plug it back into the uh, relay and check for operation. Uh, if that doesn't work, then it might indicate that uh, your relay is uh, broken and needs replacing. And underneath the uh, starter relay, uh, you can see two large terminals. So one of them goes to the uh, battery 12 volts, the other goes to the starter motor. And this is what switches the uh, 12 volt power to the starter motor. And also on the starter relay, uh, you can see two fuses. So there's one here and one here. Uh, this one's a spare one, 
and this one powers um, all of the electrical systems on the bike other than the uh, starter motor. So this has nothing to do with the starter motor, but uh, it does power everything else. So if you're having other electrical issues, not getting power, uh, check the fuse here. Another issue you might experience is you press the e-start, um, the starter relay clicks, but the starter motor doesn't turn over. Um, in this case, first check you should make is check the battery voltage, and it should be above 13 volts. Then check your battery and ground connections. Check the starter relay and connections. Then check your starter motor connection. So there's a 12 volt cable connection to the starter motor and the ground is through the body of the starter motor. So check all of that is good. Then you can che check the starter motor itself and an easy check to make is disconnect the 12 volt connection from the starter motor body and then connect up a 12 volt battery directly to the starter motor and uh, make sure it turns over. And the final check to make is that the Bendix isn't jammed. So if the Bendix bushings become really bad, uh, the Bendix can get jammed up and uh, not turn over uh, when the starter motor is trying to turn it over. Uh, ultimately, um, if the bushings aren't replaced, uh, the starter motor can get burnt out. So it's a very good idea to check this early and not try and make uh, too many um, tries of uh, starting it without checking. And this fault is that uh, you press the e-start button, the starter spins, but the engine doesn't turn over. Um, so in this case, uh, like other checks, you should check the battery voltage, check the battery and ground connections, check the Bendix, check the Bendix bushings, and also check the starter motor. So any of these items can reduce the uh, speed that the starter motor turns over and prevent the Bendix from uh, fully engaging in the flywheel. So in closing, some tips to help ensure that you don't have any issues with your e-start while out riding. Uh, if you have a lithium battery, uh, maintain it and make sure you use a lithium battery charger and also make sure the uh, connections are all clean and uh, secure. The next tip is to inspect the Bendix bushings regularly and replace if necessary. I recommend using higher quality XRC bronze bushings. Uh, they should be much more reliable and should last a lifetime of the bike. And the last tip is if your bike doesn't come fitted standard with a Kickstarter is to fit a Kickstarter kit as a backup to the e-start system. Particularly if you do a lot of cold weather riding or if you ride in remote areas.